all right right now I'm about to do a requested video on what I've done to my tank and details about it first off the first thing I want to say is that talk about the plants when I put the plants in there I put them in there and I just let them grow I don't do anything else to them I don't take the water pH the GH the KH I don't test the uh, anything in the water, the chemicals, nothing. I don't even know how to do that yet. I have my own CO2 I'm making, which isn't working out too well. I'm saving up for a pressurized system. But, like I said, I just throw plants in there and let them do their thing. I'm going to start off, and this is a 20 gallon tank. I got it in a Marineland kit. The kit came with a canopy that went on top. The canopy had a light fixture in there that had a T8 light and a penguin bio oil filter. It was working good for me, but I wanted to upgrade into this T5 how output light fixture. This light fixture right now is from Current USA and it has four bulbs. It's really not the best out there, but it suits my needs. Many people don't really like it because it doesn't have its own individual reflectors on the inside, which is the silver metal that reflects light downward. And yeah, which I guess it gives it more lumens. I'm not really sure, but it suits my needs like I said it was well within my budget as the first light fixture I got I like it I had no problems with it and I will probably continue to use the brand current USA and I recommend it to anyone who's just starting out you don't have to go out and get the extra expensive light fixtures I will get rid of it and I'm getting rid of it because I want to get a bigger fish tank I want to get a 46 or something around 46 which is like fixture when I fit, uh, fit so I'm forced to get rid of it but I will say when I do get rid of it I will go with the same brand again current USA probably get a one that's water with six lights or eight if they make one with eight or most likely six the bulbs I have in there are about to be replaced after the video. I'm using replacing them with these bulbs. I have two 10,000 Ks, a Flora Sun, which I believe is 55K, 55,000, and the Ultra Sun, which is full spectrum, which is 65, which is supposed to mimic the daylight. I'm going to replace, use those to replace them and mark this date as the one year mark that I replace these lights try to replace them every year or so moving on down to the tank I'm talking about the substrate now the substrate is a Japanese brand that I got here in Japan which is control soil it's kind of like control but just without the L and it's like the ADA aqua soil that everybody uses mostly the Amazonia except this didn't cloud up at all when I put water in there. It kept this water this clear. I didn't have to do any water changes. <laughs> also, it doesn't have any chemicals in there like fertilizers, ammonias, and phosphates that the other soil may have, which causes algae blooms. If you're not prepared for that, and don't cycle your water and replace it and get all that extra fertilizer out of the so aqua soil I like it but since it doesn't has anything I have to add root sticks to the plants below and use the fertilizers up there which is I have tetra plant fluoroprot which I guess they don't really make it for America markets no more and food tetra color we bring up more color to fish and algae wafers. Here is Flourish Excel, which I used to get the 
green spot algae off the leaves. As you don't see them up there anymore. As in my other video. Down here the leaves don't have them that much either. And it actually worked. And the substrate as I was saying is, is pretty good. Uh, I want to use another soil next. Rocks or, or whatever. Black to black rocks. I don't know what they're called right now. but I want to use those next. Next, I'm going to talk about is the driftwood. The driftwood I got is pretty uniquely shaped. It's like a a mountain or something. I haven't really seen any driftwood this shape before. And I like it. But when I first got it, it gave me a lot of problems. For one, it didn't want to waterlog. Which means it's full of air bubbles. So as soon as you stick it in the water, it floats right back to the top. The second problem was it wasn't really treated or anything, as I would say. It still had its bark on there. When I threw it in the water, a couple days, this white, fuzzy cotton stuff appeared that most people see on their newly added driftwood. And yeah, it started to eat away at the, the driftwood and cover it up like mold. It was said to be natural. But I didn't want to wait months for it to dissipate on its own. So I took the driftwood out. I threw it in the sun. It's middle of the summer for three days straight. After that, I took sandpaper and sanded off all the bark. It's just those spots you see. I sanded it all down as smooth as possible. Once I was done sanding, I boiled it, I boiled it in hot water about three hours which killed the fungus or the bacteria or whatever that white stuff was that was covering the wood and I haven't seen it since it's been nice I will say that the java fern has fully attached to it you don't see the green cottage string around it anymore you still see remnants of the string but it completely dissolved and by the time it's off, the Java fern has already attached to it. <laughs> I also want to remove these ties around the, the anibus. Pretty sure the roots have attached to it too, as you can see. So it's probably anchored down there. The plants I have in here, probably what's not much. Most of them are the same species, I just have multiple. Here's my favorite is Hygrophilia. It's an extremely easy plant, but it eats up potassium out of your water. It's easy to propagate, just clip it and plant it. This plant was the same one in the other video you've seen going to the top. I also made a video trimming those, I believe. I think I did. But in the other video you see it back there going over to the top, I cut that back. And I uh, put them put them in here. And that's what you see up there. Are those? So the hygrophilia. There's three. I think main one, broadleaf, needle leaf, and compact. They're all the same species, but just different variants. I have two anibus up there, as you know. I have two here on this piece of driftwood down here I kind of bought it attached there on this wood and I have another piece here which is growing against this other piece of driftwood that I cut off the main piece in the back because it was too big to fit in the fish tank um, I have the java fern which is growing well it has baby leaves leaflets growing off the leaves all around it in the back multiplying and waiting for those to set in so I can propagate those and the last plant I have in here is jungle valve which you've seen in the other videos and I also made a video clipping those and it's doing excellent still sending out more runners along the bottom can't really even stop it that's it for plants that I have. 
um, the animals, the, f the fauna, uh, amino shrimp, amino shrimp, have about 10 of those in there, 10, 12, possibly more. See this guy here is carrying off the food. Yeah, he's gonna take that. I have tons and tons of snails. I really don't care about the snails because they help keep the glass clean and they're not really bothering me. It's not a shell aquarium, it's just a natural aquarium. Yeah, I guess these are Asian trumpet snails or pond snails or I don't know what they are, but I'm pretty sure they're invasive. And I have these snails, narrate snails, which are supposed to be good at destroying algae, which I'm pretty sure they are. I haven't had much algae on my glass since I got them. I have carton tetras, about six, eight of those, and a couple of guppies. This guppy here is, you see, she has a fat belly and a black dot. And it's behind her, she can turn around or the young that's in her stomach. It should takes about 21, 30 days for the process of birth. So she should be coming up giving birth soon. I have two more pregnant ones in here somewhere. And I have two males. This is one male. That's the other female. And there's one more if she comes up and that's all I have for animals I also have all kind of other natural creatures living in the soil below but I don't really count those I guess sometimes you'll see them like little worms or whatnot. oh and another plant is this plant I don't know what it is it's some kind of grass star grass or something I don't know what it is hasn't been doing well, as I would say, but it hasn't really been doing bad either. I really don't know if it needs more light, because the sins are runners. So I know it's, it's not dying, but I don't know what it needs in total. Uh, I predict that this tank is going to explode. In growth because the jungle valve is starting to spread out through the back of the tank so it's going to fill in pretty soon um, I do water changes every week once a week I do a 50% water change take out half the water put more water in and I add one full I guess cap of that the rest of the time I have for the I'll just add like half probably once a day or once every other day for the plants to absorb. Um, I also use the Flourish Excel. Just a little bit of that, not too much. I don't want to put too much stuff in there. For the filtration down here, I have this Sun Sun filter. Got it off of eBay for like 80 bucks. That's which shipment handler. And it's just a setup I got down there. It's kind of, it's a good filter. It's Chinese. It's not really name brand, I would say. And the name changes every couple months, I guess. Now it's going by the name of Aquatop. It went by Grinch. Perfect filter, but it's a good filter. It does its job. Holds about a gallon of water in there. I would suppose and has pretty tall so you can see compared to this other filter which is for the small tank about a dresser um, it has four baskets inside for all the media you need or possibly need they're big thick baskets so they hold a lot of real estate back here I don't know if you see it the white box is the timer, automatic timer. I have it to come on at noon when I'm at work and it stays on for about eight hours once that's done. And this is all the other cables and cords, just a mess, but that's it. I mean, I really have nothing else to talk about on the tank. 
I have also I had this LED light for a moonlight effect. When the lights go up, let me see. Can't really tell now because the room lights on, but kind of get the idea. It looks better when the room lights off. You don't see the reflection, but yeah, that's just some different lights. The acne light and a 10,000K light is on right now. This is all of them. And this is just a pink plant one. The floor and the 10,000. See the color. I feed my fish once a day or twice a day, depending on how active they are. They look happy or they look anxious for food at the top. Throw some flakes in there. The shrimps like it. See these guys down here still eating on that flake, and he's not not letting me record him. I guess he's just gonna run up with it. Snails. Doing what they do, I guess. Breeding. Making more snails. Tetras. I really want to get some more Tetras. Their numbers have kind of thinned out. Oh, yeah. It reminds me. Another fish that I have in here that's hiding. I don't know if I can find him. Uh, right there. I guess those are uh, autos. What are known as autos? What a short name. I don't know how to pronounce the whole name, but they're catfish. They feed primarily on algae. I have three of those in here. Three of those guys. Kind of shy. They never really come to the front. But I love those guys. I put a cucumber in there for them to eat. They haven't really touched it, but they've been eating on something. They're still alive, so I guess algae in the back of the tank that I can't see. I have three, just three of those. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to talk about. I mean, the anabis is doing great. See, it's putting off another leaf here. Another leaf back there. Let's put out about one leaf every week. It's kind of, I haven't really seen it stretch out, the rotten zone, or the stolen. It's just been putting out more leaves. I don't know if that's really good or bad, but I'm going to take it as a good thing. I guess sooner or later the stolen will start to stretch across the driftwood here. Cover that up. But the tank probably won't be running really long because I have to tear it down in a couple months because I'm moving. So, I mean, that's just about it. The deal, uh, DIY do it yourself CO2 system there, just yeast and sugar. It's not really doing well. You lose pressure. As I said before, I'm saving up for a pressurized system. It might take a couple of months to get the money for that. But I mean that's my tank. That's all I really have to talk about. If it's anything else I guess you wanna know just send me a message or a comment. Uh, and I will let you know.